Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Stanley Director Show. You know, I am indeed privileged. I'd say I'm, I'm so thrilled, happy, that I have a gentleman who is a, an icon in our town, in Hollywood, California. His name is Skip Elo, and he has his own cable show. He's an entertainer. He's an actor. Uh, he dances. He does everything. And I have him on my show, and he also wrote this book called... The Boy with the Betty Grable Legs. So I am very pleased to have Skip on my show, and I wanted to tell Skip something. Actually, I wanted to ask him something. Okay. Skippy Lowe, how did you get into show business? <laughs> Stanley, that's a real good question. I don't remember. I was only nine years old. I, I came out here to Hollywood. But I used to do things in Rockford, Illinois, as little boys, six years old, mm -hmm. and with tents and doing Mae West and Common Miranda mm -hmm. and Jimmy Durante. And I tried a little penny and, a little, you know, the little our gang comedy tent. And, right. And that's what happened at the beginning. My mother took me to Hollywood, and that's it. And, and then... The story went on. What did you do in Hollywood? I mean, you had to be a little kid then, huh? Well, I was nine. I came out here, and my mother got an agent, and uh, we lived in Normandy and uh, Franklin, uh -huh. in a rooming house. It was theatrical rooming house at the time. Uh -huh. And uh, so my mother got an agent, and then she's put me to school. I went to HPS, Hollywood Professional School on, on uh, Hollywood Boulevard, Hollywood Boulevard in Western Avenue. Uh -huh. And Mrs. Manning was the principal. Uh -huh. A lot of people like uh, John O'Connor. Really? A lot of stars used mm -hmm. to go there. It was mm -hmm. a professional school for young boys and right. girls. Was it very difficult getting work as an actor as a kid? <laughs> I don't remember. Oh, you don't remember? <laughs> How do you like that, I got a, Stan? I got into, Stanley, I got into a man by the name of, uh, he, he was at Monogram Duke, uh, Maurice Duke. Oh. Maurice Duke gave me work all the time. Uh -huh. Little little B movies, but it was great. And I They're loved East it. Side Kid movies, right? Yes. And then I was my first movie was Song uh, Best Foot Forward with mm. Tommy Dix. Really? And then I did another movie, uh, Jane Powell's first movie, mm. Song of the Open Road. Really? And I was one of the kids picking oranges. And then I kept working. I just mm -hmm. that's it. That's yeah, but I, you're you're really uh, a kind of a very uh, open, extroverted person, and you're kind of like a, well, burlesque. You went into burlesque. Oh, Stanley, that's a long time ago. <laughs> I went with my Aunt Sadie. Yeah. My Aunt Sadie in New York. And the then Follies. I, you, you were at the Follies. At Sammy's Bowery Follies. Right. I worked there as a singing newsboy. Uh -huh. And when I was a singing newsboy, then I, I was like... 12, 13, 14, mm -hmm. and I was doing all the Gus Edwards songs, mm -hmm. He's Me Pal, If I Were a Millionaire, and uh, Give My Regards to Broadway. I did all those great songs, mm -hmm. gay 90 things, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, my aunt was Sophie Tuckerish. Oh, right, right. And I remember reading about her in the book. She's uh, great. She was big, fat, and great what, Sophie what, Tucker. Was she your inspiration, your aunt? I think so. I think so. My mother was pushed me, but my aunt took over. Mm -hmm. And then I left, I grew up, and then I left uh, for Chicago, Illinois, and I start working strip joints. Now you're talking. Well, what, what, were you Sammy LaBella then? Sammy LaBella. Hey, Managa. Sammy LaBella uh, for many, uh, many years. Uh -huh. My father's Italian, my mother's Jewish, uh -huh. and Sammy is my real name. Mm -hmm. So I have always used Sammy LaBella until I met a guy by the name of Dick Roman later on mm -hmm. who changed it. Was he a singer? Great singer, Italian singer from Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Dick Roman used to sing songs like Love is a Mini Spender Thing. Oh, yeah, sure. Victimonish quality uh -huh. right, voice right. and great, really. Right. He, he had a on, great influence on your life, uh, according to the book. Yes, Dick and I, I met him when he won the Arthur Godfrey show. Talent Scouts. That's right. Uh -huh. And he got his first job at the Latin Quarter in New York. Mm -hmm. And I went backstage with him and... He was great, and then he started getting jobs, work, and uh, I was a comedian with him for a while, mm -hmm. and then he changed my name. 
Skippy Low, because I run around the stage a lot. Uh -huh. I jump on bars and stuff right. at the time. So we used to Skippy, skipping around. Mm -hmm. So that's what happened there. I remember uh, reading in your wonderful memoir uh, when you were over in Vietnam entertaining the troops and you were at some officers club and, and they seemed to be reading papers or something no, like that. that wasn't in Vietnam. Why do you like Stan always puts his foot in his mouth? Stanley. Okay. That was in Germany. Okay. That's when I went to Germany. Okay. Yeah. I was booked in Germany in Frankfurt in uh -huh. Wiesbaden. And then they, you have to, I didn't know you had an audition for them. Mm -hmm. Come from New York to audition for a bunch of sergeants. So I got very upset when I found out. And so I went, looked at everybody and I said, God, am I here to audition for you people? Good God, I just flew in from New York. Mm -hmm. What do they know about show business? Mm -hmm. I went over there and I took their pencils and I said, the auction's over with. Mm -hmm. And I walked off. Mm -hmm. But then I got work. Really? There was one officer really liked me, so mm -hmm. he says, I'll get you a job. So from then on, I proved myself. They, they were scared of me because I was very outspoken. I was like a very, ins I was a young Don Rickles at that time. Oh, really? But not as insulting as right. he was. Uh -huh. But but you, I, I, I was very touched by uh, uh, part of the book where you were entertaining troops in Vietnam and they were the wounded and, and how uh, later on in the book you, you say you really didn't think the war was right, uh, but, but I mean you were really for the men. I certainly was. Or, or, and the women, the service people. Yes, yes, because those boys there were mostly stoned in Vietnam. What do you mean? Well, the Viet Cong's women gave them some drugs. They drugged our boys. Uh -huh. Most of the boys were drugged. Right. And uh, getting through that Vietnam War, most of them. And I'm telling you, we lost a lot of boys because they were drugged out. And uh, I believe that war had a lot to do with those boys, that Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. And um, the Viet Cons, I, stay, I, went to, I went to Germany, and then from Germany, when the Vietnam War started, I, I met a girl by the name of Margie McGlory, mm -hmm. a singer, and I took her, I said, let's go to Vietnam and let's entertain the troops. And we weren't special, we were special service, we weren't USO, USO is like Bob Hope, comes in with the plane, right. does his show, right. they come out, right. but we, were entertainers who just did our on our own, right? And we got paid from the government, but it was right. special service shows, mm -hmm. and that's what I did. While the bullets were, uh, well, we were right there on the ground in Da Nang, La Trang, right there, right. entertaining those guys, and they were great. They were absolutely great. So that that really had to kind of uh, have a, a, a tremendous impression on your life. I mean, seeing that things could end in a moment. Over. You know, I wasn't the only one stayed there. There was l people like who did special services, like Martha Ray. Mm -hmm. Martha yeah. didn't go with USO. She stayed there, mm -hmm. enter uh, entertained, and also as a nurse. Mm -hmm. Martha Ray was one of the greatest ladies we have in the business today. She was really? one of the greatest. And Mamie Van Doren, another one. She mm -hmm. stayed there. She helped the boys. There are a lot of people. Connie, Connie uh, Stevens, another mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. she, well, she did specials. She did USO, but mm -hmm. Connie's still mm -hmm. a great lady. She, mm -hmm. she really devoted her time and her energies. So in your act over there, what did you open like? Comedy, As, just, just, just insult jokes, talking uh -huh. about America and talking about the guys and uh. have a couple girls and we do burlesque mm -hmm. gags and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And I sang and danced and I used to have a go-go dancer and, uh, from Australia, mm -hmm. and then I had a girl singer, mm -hmm. Margie McGlory, and mm -hmm. she was great. You bring two girls and yourself, an American, they love you. That's mm -hmm. all you need. Well, you know, I'm cutting around on, on your book. I because, know you are. <laughs> because <laughs> there, okay. there were so many great moments that I had reading the book, like your, your years in Paris. Oh. And, why, and Josephine Baker. Yes, yes, yes. Can you... Yes. Can you Tell us uh, a bit about that. This is in the 60s, early 60s, when I, when I was living in Paris. That's when I met the girl singer, Margie McGlory, in mm -hmm. Paris. Mm -hmm. I was staying at a hotel called the Montjoly, mm -hmm. and it was a wonderful hotel in Pigalle. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a theatrical hotel, and we were having military shows there from uh, Camp de Loge, Bay, uh, uh, Fountain Blue, Everoux, Shape, all mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm until de Gaulle kicked the Americans out. Really? 
when they, when well the American boys were behaving drunks you know in, in Paris they were destroying Paris at the mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. throwing beer bottles all over the really? place drunks oh yeah they were mm -hmm. they behaved badly and so de Gaulle had the right to say get out sure. we don't want that we don't tolerate it mm -hmm. so and I stayed Right. After the military left, I love Paris. I stayed in Paris. Uh, I worked. I worked a club there. I, we lived in Pigalle, mm -hmm. up at the Montmartre, mm -hmm. and I just loved it. Well, with Josephine Baker, did you? Did I how, went to Germany with her. Yeah. Uh, there was an Australian guy, and we we took a tra uh, a boat. Mm -hmm. No, I mean actually not a boat. We took a Citroen. Uh, Citroen. Uh, the Citroen is a car from uh, Paris oh, to okay. right. Frankfurt, right. and uh, we got there, and uh, she entertained the boys there. She right. needed work. That's the first time she worked for a little money. She right. needed money. She had 12 children to take care of. <laughs> wow. 12, Stanley, mm -hmm. and it was very hard for her. Mm -hmm. She didn't know what to do, so that's what happened there. But Josephine Baker was a great lady. She she helped the boys a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, Skip. Uh, eventually, you came back, obviously, to uh, Los Angeles. No, I went to Australia. I went to Australia. I worked the RSL clubs there, mm -hmm. and I was with the Evely brothers. I w I worked with Phil and Don. I worked all us all over Germany and Australia, mm -hmm. and I stayed in Australia. Then I went to Singapore. Uh -huh. I worked bases in Singapore. We have American Bellator and Australian bases there, mm -hmm. and I stayed in Singapore. It's all in the book right. about my travels there, and uh, I was broke mm -hmm. when I landed in Perth. Mm -hmm. No money. Right. God, I hit the elevator to check in the hotel. I stepped on a wallet, mm -hmm. and there it was, five to ten thousand wow. dollars right in this wallet, American dollars. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what to do. I, I just called the desk. I says, someone just dropped their wallet, and mm -hmm. I, I turned it in. Mm -hmm. Guess what? I got $1,000 this man gave me, wow. and I had no money. Right. I arrived in Perth, yeah. from Singapore to Perth. I took a freighter, because mm -hmm. I used to ride freighters a lot. I love freighters, because mm -hmm. it's cheap, mm -hmm. and it's an experience of life. I, I'm a bohemian. Mm -hmm. Actually, that is what I am. I'm a bohemian entertainer. I love to be on my own mm -hmm. and travel around the world mm -hmm. and meet people. Yeah, well, uh, I know Shelley Winters is a very dear friend of yours, and you've interviewed her a number of times. Yeah, I just had a, a she just had a birthday party. We were at her birthday party at the oh. uh, Silver Spoons. You know, I think we have a photograph. Oh yes. Of that. Oh. Uh, in fact, we have a couple of photographs. But uh, Shelley. Yeah, yeah, Shelley and we, Sally Kirkland. Yeah. Uh, oh, there's. there's a, a, yeah, that's Sally, and that's Shelley's birthday at the Silver Spoon. That's her favorite little restaurant. It's on Havenhurst and Santa Monica Boulevard. Mm -hmm. and and this is her 80th birthday. Isn't she great? Look at her. Yeah, She's she looks She, she looks is fantastic. the Jewish mama of, and a great oh, really? actress and yeah. a great human being, mm -hmm. a humanitarian. Mm -hmm. She's a great humanitarian. Well, you know, you're a pretty modest guy. You're pretty much of a humanitarian, too. I, I, I know personally from uh, what people have said that I've heard about you, and, and you have very strong opinions about things, too. Well, about, I, uh, I Keating. Uh, I, I yeah, Keating. about Mr. Keating. Yeah, uh, I went down, I'm the guy who went down there, and I slapped him because uh, I, I took Rip Taylor's wig, and I pottered it, and I went down, and <laughs> Mr. Keating was ripping me off. I just made all that money in Vietnam, right. and he ripped seniors citizens off mm -hmm. and uh, went SNL I invested some money and I got ripped off for all my money practically every wow. pen of it and so I got very upset I went down to the courthouse in Los Angeles and I slapped him right across the head with a pottered wig wow. but the only reason I made I didn't hurt him I, yeah. I wouldn't hurt anybody the right. only reason I did that to make a statement Stanley right it's like an English statement of courts, English courts, mm -hmm. of the hit of the wig, the pottered wig, and that's mm -hmm. why I did that. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, you, Skip, I want to get to a little technique uh, about uh, your business, which is, well, you do all kinds of things. How do you know you're funny? How do I know I'm funny? I'm, does, I, I did, don't know. Did, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about... How does about people if, know? Yeah, how do they know? Well, I mean, they have to go out on stage and find out if they're funny. they got to... You know, if, 
if you go out on stage, regardless, like showcases, right? They have them at the comedy store. They have, you know, right. you go out there and you just do five minutes of dialogue and see if you're funny. You just got to do it. You write some material and talk about it and just be yourself. And if you're funny, the audience will let you know. Well, you know, okay, that, that part I can understand, but I, I have interviewed a number of writers that work with collaborators, and they tell me, well, I sit at the typewriter, and Joe walks around here and uh, uh, says the funny lines and all that kind of stuff. You work by yourself. I have no writers. I do my own thing. I tell the truth on stage. If you're truthful and do it honestly, it becomes funny. But I mean, how do you prepare? In other words, do you do? You, are you in your room? Do you walk around and no, say, no, Stanley, no, no. You just go out there and you do an act. It's I've an done eight. an act. I do an yeah. act, Stanley. Okay. I don't know. I don't. I just. I've done it so many years. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm funny or not. I'm just an entertainer. Right. right. I let the audience tell me. I don't know. Right. So. Well, yeah, that. Uh, but you're a writer, I understand. You're a comedy writer. Yeah, right? I've I've written all kinds of things, and uh, I'm always open to uh, learning and stealing from other writers. I mean, I understand. I like that word, stealing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the uh, the best. It's not you shouldn't steal. Oh, you borrow, borrow. Borrow. Okay. Yeah. Because I I understand. Uh, a couple of writers have told me the best. Writers to collaborate with are the ones who are dead, like people like uh, Jack London, <laughs> okay. people like the, and Shakespeare. Uh -huh. You don't have to worry about uh, uh -huh. royalties and things like that. But by the way, what do you like doing best? Do you like, uh, well, being the stand-up comic, the entertainer, the talk show host, the writer, the author? This is something Skippy new. Low for me. This author. Is something new for me, and I'm enjoying it. I, I love. Uh, since I've learned the computer, I work on the computer a lot now, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm learning it, and I'm typing it, and I'm doing another book right now, things that my editor took out, mm -hmm. and I'm putting it back in there, so I'm doing another one. And, uh, yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm more of a, an entertainer around about... Mm -hmm. Personality. I'd call myself a personality. I don't mm -hmm. call myself any one thing. I call myself me, Skippy, mm -hmm. and that's it. I call myself a personality. Well, you know, the one thing about Skippy Lowe is that he talks to you directly, and uh, whether it be uh, Tony Curtis or 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 the guy who owns Cantor's uh, Delicatessen. Yeah. I mean, Skip was, is still talking to you. He was you. a great interviewer, that uh, Jerry Cantor. I thought he was kind of a cute mm -hmm. guy. Right. I interviewed him. You saw that interview. Yes, though. I did see I that I thought interview. he's a great little guy, and uh, I, liked, I, I liked to look in people's eyes, and I like to get their feelings, and I like to understand what what they are all about. That's what you do. You just talk to them. You, you've interviewed so many movie stars. I mean, uh, Betty Davis, for crying out loud. I mean, I, Betty Davis, I have that. I have also I Lopino's last interview. Right. I have um, Cornell Wiles' last interview. Right. I have a lot of the... You're in love with, uh, I'm sorry to say. That's well, okay. actually, why am I sorry to say it? You're in love with Gene Wallace. Gene Wallace, yes, I was. Very much so. That was Cornell Wilde's ex-wife. Ex-wife, right. Yeah. She also married to French Antone. Ah. And she was so beautiful. Mm -hmm. She really was beautiful. But she had a bad habit of drinking. Right. She loved to drink. And mm -hmm. uh, I just couldn't... I drink wine, but it's difficult right. for to love someone who drinks a lot. Right. And I just couldn't marry her. I just couldn't. I was going to get married to her. I really... That's how much I really... That's the only woman I have ever ever loved in my life yes you know I like women I like women very I much know you do. I do right. very much a lot of people don't understand that but I really do like women and um, but it becomes difficult when a woman drinks mm -hmm. woman becomes a little a man drinks it's a little different mm -hmm. but when a woman drinks and she is a drunk it's just it's not it doesn't look good Right, right. You know, Skip, uh, in your varied career, have you ever thought about uh, if, if somebody gave you a hundred million dollars to produce a film, and you're, I mean, you are like Mr. Hollywood in a lot of ways. I mean, you, you know these stars and all that, but, but I'm sure you also have 
stories that you might want to tell. What would you do for $100 million? What kind of movie would you make me? Okay? I wouldn't make a movie. You wouldn't make a movie? No. If I had $100 million, I would try to donate it and spread it around and help people. At my age, money is not that It's never been that important, Stanley. Stanley, I take freighters. I take buses. I don't drive. I take a bus. People offer me drives, riding. I don't drive. I, I like to be on my own. I just said to you, I'd like to be my own person. Right. I've always been my own person. Uh, I've. You're a poet. Is, you are a poet, Skip. I, I, I must tell you. No, I, I, I have to I tell you, you are a poet. I really want to just read a little passage over here, a short little passage. Bear with me on page 49. I kind of marked it out okay. when I read. Just, I'm, I'm, I'm just, when Skip was in New York, and he says, New York's a walker's paradise, and my day was never complete without a brisk constitutional to New York's west side, east side, right side, and wrong side. I walked everywhere. My best pair of patent leathers was the only cab I needed, and there were all the great nameless faces I'd pass along the street, stone faces, never looking at you, walking statues. That's what the lovely in New York. It's the greatest city in the world. It's the only place in America for me, Stanley. I never liked California, ever. Only place in America is Manhattan, because you just said that. You can walk in Manhattan and see things, and you're, you're your own person, nobody bothers you. But in LA, you can't walk, but I do walk. <laughs> I well, take buses you, because people honk horns and they're all so nosy and everybody's mm -hmm. so nosy. But not in New York, Stanley. Mm -hmm. But you're back there, aren't you, from there? I'm from there, Brownsville originally, right. which so, is a kind of know, a little... New York uh, is New York. It's the New greatest York. city in the world. Not even Paris or London or any of that. New York has its own personality. I know, but Skip, you brought some of New York to L.A., so so we have some of New York here. But And also, speaking of L.A., uh, there, there's an article about you in the newspaper, which uh, we have. Uh -huh. uh, I happen to have uh, cut out a copy, and uh, I, I, I'd like us to kind of take a little look over Oh, there. that Let was me. in the living section. It just happened. Charles Casello wrote it, and it was a very, very very nice article. It was a very honest article. He's a good writer. He got me perfect. Mm -hmm. The only thing he missed out of that was one word. <laughs> I won't tell you, but okay. <laughs> but that's the, that was a very good article. Right. Wasn't there a second part of yes, that? Yes, there was. There yeah, is a there second is, part yes, of that. Yes, it's a showing we... about, uh, yeah. I don't know if they'll, there it is. Yeah, that's yeah. the movie I was in with um, Gene Wallace. Uh, no, oh. that's J uh, Jerry. Uh, oh, that? that looks Gene like Wyler. Uh, Gene Wilder. Yeah, Gene Wilder. World's greatest lover. I was in that with right. him there. That's when I just got back from Vietnam mm -hmm. in the 70s. Because mm -hmm. I didn't know where to do when I got right. back here in, in the 70s from right. Vietnam. And so I came to visit my mother, and here I got stuck. Mm -hmm. Then my mother died, and then I got a job at uh, Marshall Edson Place, the E Little Club. Yes. And then I stayed there for a while. Well, that, that's that, where Joan Rivers started. Joan Rivers, right? She was you, doing her workshop there at the time. Mm -hmm. Were you the MC there, or uh, I? I went in there as a comedian uh, mm -hmm. first, and right. then Marshall Edson, the owner, says, "Why don't you stay and make a showcase?" And I didn't know what showcases were, so I mm -hmm. said, "Yeah, I'll, I'll try it. Present singers, comedians." And then uh, Michael Feinstein came from Ohio. He was one of my piano players. Like, Is that right? He wasn't my piano player. He was, he was on the show as a piano player uh -huh. when he first arrived. Mm -hmm. He was great. I knew he had talent just then. He was just fantastic. Is, is, that, that is a gut-level feeling, obviously. It, it, I could tell, tell it, talent it, right away. Right. You, you just, I've been in the business. I can see a, that certain extra something they have. Mm -hmm. They have to have that certain extra. But uh, comedians, isn't that the toughest uh, way to go, being a comic? Uh, uh, it's the toughest, yes. I mean, but you, you, uh, you, you uh, uh, had a showcase, I believe, at the uh, Comedy Store. I was there uh, for 10 years. I was at the Hyatt on Sunset. After yeah. the E Little Club, I went to the Hyatt. Mm -hmm. Then from there, I went to Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. The Cinegrill, right? The Cinegrill, before yep. they closed it, the, the hotel, and then they redid it, you know? Right. I right. left there, and then I went to the Comedy Store. Mm -hmm. And I stayed for Mitzi for 10 years at the, upstairs at the Belly Room. Mitzi Shore, right? Yes, Mitzi and Charlie and Sammy Shore. I knew them mm -hmm. from Chicago. Mm -hmm. Did you know that Sammy Shore was the partner of 
of uh, Don Rickle. I'm not Don Rickles of. Um, What's his name? Uh, Shecky Green. No, I didn't know. Sterling that. and Green. Yes. No. He, yeah. Shecky Green was uh, Sammy Shore's partner. They were partners at the beginning of their career. Sammy Shore is a very funny guy. Yeah, he is very funny. But, Skip, I want to <coughs> zero in on you. I mean, you're writing another book. What, what would you like to do besides writing the other book? What, w would you like to have, a, say, a, a, a bigger budget on your uh, no, talk show? No, 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 no. no. That's, not, that's not important, Stanley. Right. It's you just said the that idea, before early. I, I the, old, the, on, the yeah. only thing right now is doing what I'm doing to love and interviewing people that I enjoy doing. Right. And... Uh, and that's about it, you know. I don't care. Uh, I don't care to write, have a bigger budget or anything. I'm happy. I right. don't want a car. I don't want a big right. apartment or right. big home. I'm just happy as I am at my age. I'm just. I've tasted life. I've enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. God's been good to me, mm -hmm. and uh, I there like to help some, others. You like to help others. I do very much so. I uh, always try. Uh huh. And uh, do you have a couple of regrets, maybe, or? along the way or we won't talk about that no huh? no we can talk about it i don't have regrets yeah. not at all no mm -hmm. not really i wish i didn't uh, stay here i should have went back to new york mm -hmm. after vietnam because mm -hmm. i love new york new york is right well you brought some of that new york sunshine to us as i said before but uh do you have any advice to give to uh perhaps uh people who want to get into show business keep working if they really want to if they really know if they want to be in the business not everybody can be an actor everyone comes to Hollywood trying to be stars I think if you would just try to be an actor not just a star don't right. aim for just becoming a star everyone right. wants to be a star there right. is not everybody can be a star Everybody, just be a good working actor. That right. is the most important thing. Or a or, or working comedian. Or mm -hmm. try what you want to do. I don't know. A good singer or a good pianist, whatever. You know, Skip, we're on our way out. I hate to no, that's cut okay. you off. No, uh, that's because okay. we're going to keep talking, though. Yes, because, okay, uh, that's okay. I want to thank my wonderful guest, Skip Elo. Mm -hmm. And guys, remember, the boy with... The Betty Grable Legs. It is, Thank you. And it's a good book, Stanley. Uh, I enjoyed it. Yeah, it's, and, uh, it's out now. It's really out now. You can, they can get it anywhere. They can uh, just go anywhere and get it. Right. But, but Skip, uh, maybe we can go for a cup of coffee one day at the farmer's market. You know, oh, I, have, I have a book, <laughs> Skip. I have a book at home. It weigh, weighs about five pounds, uh -huh. and it's about 700 pages. And 